you were convicted on the unanimous verdict of the jury of the murder of your, two, of your three-year-old son, Dwelania, and on four counts of child cruelty. It now falls to me to sentence you. As I told you on the 21st of March, the sentence I must impose on you for murder is fixed by law. I am required to sentence you to life imprisonment. But I must also consider whether to impose a whole life order, or if not, what the minimum term should be before the early release provisions can apply to you. I make it clear now that I do not consider that this is a case where a whole life term is appropriate. But I emphasise that the minimum term means what it says. You will serve that period before you are eligible even to apply for parole. The victim surcharge applies in this case. I record here that counsel instructed by you for this hearing, who had said on the 16th of May that he was able to appear and represent you, withdrew shortly before the hearing began, indicating that he had not had sufficient time to prepare. Mr Nicholas Lumley, King's counsel, was available to represent you at court, but you declined to instruct him. Nonetheless, at my request, Mr Lumley agreed to appear as advocates of the court and to put forward submissions and mitigation as would be appropriate on your behalf. I am very grateful to him for his assistance. The facts. For the purpose of sentencing, I reach conclusions against you only when I am sure of those facts. All my findings will be consistent with the verdict of the jury. The events that led to Dwellania's injuries and death were explored in great detail during the trial, and I need only summarise them here. In 2022, you were living with your two sons in Usha Moor in Durham. Your husband was undergoing training in the RAF and so was away from home for the whole of the period with which I am concerned. You were responsible for the care and disciplining of your two young sons. The offences all arose from your treatment of your eldest son, Dwellania, in the period from mid-October 2022 until his death on the 5th of November 2022. On Wednesday the 19th of October 2022, as I find it to be, you discovered Dwellania had soiled himself. He was still undergoing toilet training at the time, and, as you and every parent knows, accidents sometimes happen. Your account of what happened was that you stood him in the bath and ran hot water from the shower head over his body to clean him and simply failed to notice that the water was very hot. The jury, rightly in my view, rejected that account. As the medical experts told us, the pattern of burns on Dwellania's body was entirely inconsistent with your version of events. I accept that you took Dwellania to the bathroom and stripped off his clothes, but I find as a fact that you then ran a bath. As you knew, the bath water in your home was often extremely hot and cold water needed to be added if it was to be used to wash. But you added no cold water. Instead, you plunged your naked three-year-old son into the scalding hot water and held him down in the water for long enough to cause the dreadful injuries we saw in the photographs. You must have known that that water was extremely hot. That must have been obvious to you as you ran the water. But in any event, any decent parent would always check the temperature of the water before putting their child into it and would never press him down into hot water as I find you did. I find as a fact that you were angry with, with Dwellania, whether because of the soiling or for some other reason, and you put him into that scalding hot water deliberately to punish him. The result was the appalling burns of which we've seen images. Those events were the subject of count three. Unsurprisingly, Dwellania screamed out in pain from the moment he was immersed in the water. The burns he suffered covered almost 20% of his body, including, including his buttocks, scrotum and penis, the back of his thighs and the back of his calves. 
Some burns were full thickness or near to it, others more superficial. All would have been intensely painful, both at the time and for the days that followed. As you subsequently admitted, you ought immediately to have called for emergency medical assistance, but you did not do so. You were more worried about what would happen to you if you reported his injuries. So you decided to treat him yourself with materials you purchased online. That treatment was wholly inadequate and provided little of the therapeutic benefits which he would have received if treated in hospital. That continued to be the position until Dwellania's death. Your persistent failure to get prompt medical help for your badly burnt child was a subject of Count Five. You were a follower of a religious group known as the Black Hebrew Israelites, and you would listen to lectures or sermons from the group's speakers on YouTube. Mistakenly, as you subsequently admitted was the case, you took the teaching of that group to indicate that it was appropriate to punish your children, aged two and three, by beating them with a bamboo cane. You did that to Dwellania repeatedly and with sufficient force to inflict the patterned tramline bruising to numerous areas of his body, which were shown in the photographs. Those injuries were deliberately inflicted at a time when Dwellania was already seriously injured from the burns I have already described. Those beatings were all administered as punishments for behaviour that was objectively trivial, but which you considered worthy of severe punishment. What must have gone through the mind of this little boy, being beaten with a cane by his mother, despite these terrible burns, does not bear thinking about. That was the subject matter of Count Four. The mistreatment of Dwellania went beyond the infliction of these physical injuries. You also appear to regard it as perfectly acceptable to leave your children on their own, entirely unsupervised for lengthy periods, whilst you went shopping or visited your doctor. The jury found you guilty of repeated acts of abandonment. It was only a matter of good luck that Dwellania came to no harm during the periods that he and his brother were left alone. <clears throat> that was count six. Against the background of all this abuse, on the 5th of November 2022, you murdered Dwellania. You did so by shaking him, as I find it, forcefully and repeatedly. It may be that you struck his head against an object as you did so. In any event, the result was injury to his brain from which, within a few hours, he died. That was the facts that formed the subject matter of count one. I cannot be confident that you intended to kill him, and accordingly I accept the prosecution's submission that you intended him serious harm, but not death. The sentencing regime. I am required by section 322 and schedule 21 of the Sentencing Act 2020 to fix the minimum sentence to be served in respect of the offence of murder. It is argued by the Crown that the seriousness of the murder in this case is particularly high and that the appropriate starting point is one of 30 years. The basis of that submission is that it is said that I can be sure that you engaged in sadistic conduct towards Twilania. I reject that contention. I've seen no evidence that you gained pleasure, sexual or otherwise, from hurting Twilania. Nor do I accept the Crown's alternative submission that when all the evidence and offending is aggregated, the killing of Dwellania was a murder of particular, particularly high seriousness, calling for a 30-year starting point. I note in that context that it was accepted by the prosecution that when you sh shook him, you did not intend to kill him. There is no doubt that your mistreatment of your son 
over the 17 days leading up to his death was appalling in the highest degree. The callousness of your behaviour was well illustrated, in my view, by the test, text exchange between you and your boyfriend, Innocent, on the 28th of October, so some nine days after Dwellania had, had suffered the dreadful burns to the bottom half of his body. You discovered that Dwellania had accessed some of your tablets during the night and had vomited on the floor. You texted your boyfriends saying that that behaviour by Dwellania deserved, quote, major ass-kicking, close quotes. Innocent replied, quote, come on, Chris, he's a child. Just tell him not to do it again, close quotes. Your reply included the following, quote, he's old enough to know better, so he'll pay, close quotes. When Innocent told you to be gentle, your chilling reply was, quote, he'll get what he deserves, no more, no less, close quotes. In my judgment, the proper approach to determining the sentence here is to look at the various offences individually and determine the appropriate sentence for each. Then I'll make the appropriate upward adjustment to the sentence for murder, first for the aggravating features of that offence, and second to reflect the other offending. Then I will make the appropriate reduction for mitigation and considerations of totality. Since I am not satisfied that this was since I am not satisfied that this, was, uh, that this murder itself was one of particularly high seriousness, the appropriate starting point is 15 years. However, I increase that to reflect the vulnerability of your victim because of both his age and his previous injuries, the fact that this was a gross abuse of trust by you as his mother, and the fact that it was committed in the presence of another child, your younger son. That would lead me to increase the sentence for the murder alone from 15 to 22 years. I increase it further to reflect the other offending. In determining what further increase is appropriate, I've had regard to the Sentencing Council guidelines for child cruelty and to the appropriate sentences if the other offences had each stood alone. In my view, had it stood alone, Camp 3, the scolding incident, would have been regarded as a Category B1 case, the use of scalding water amounting to the use of a weapon and the dreadful burns amounting to serious physical harm. In my view, if that had stood alone, it would warrant a sentence of six years' custody. Camp 5, the failure to seek treatment for the burns, would inevitably have been treated as an aggravating feature of Camp 3. It constituted serious and prolonged neglect and would have justified an increase of two years. Count four, the beatings, if viewed alone, would fall into category B2, high culpability, medium harm, and attract a sentence of three years. Count six, the abandonment, would fall into category B3, medium culpability, low level of harm suffered, and that would on its own attract a sentence of a year. I note in passing that the top of the appropriate bracket for a single offence of child cruelty falling within category A1 is 12 years. If the child cruelty offences in your case were viewed as a whole, they would certainly attract a sentence of that order, if not more. In deciding by how much I should increase the sentence for murder to reflect the other offending, I bear in mind that had these sentences stood apart from the murder, you would have been eligible for parole in respect of them at the halfway point. In my judgment, the, appro the appropriate increase to reflect the other offending is six years, taking the total to 28 years. I must then make allowance for your mitigation and for totality. The mitigation available to you is that you intended really serious harm to Dwellania, but not his death, and that you had no previous convictions before these incidents. I then stand back and consider what sentence is just and proportionate as a whole, reflecting all your offending behaviour, the overall harm, your overall 
culpability and all the aggravating and mitigating factors relating both to you personally and to the offences. On that basis, I deduct a total of three years to reflect the two mitigating factors to which I have referred and totality. Ms Robinson, stand up. For the offence of murder, you will go to prison for life. The minimum term you will serve before you become eligible to apply for parole will be 25 years. You can go down. <laughs>